He who hesitates is, well, not lost if it's our young friend Oliver Wakefield with his halting, stuttering and amusing, quippy style. He he hello, everybody. I'm terribly pleased you could all be here th this. And as I look into your simple faces, I, I feel simply. And, and how, how many of you can, can look into, into my, with a cast in, in your, and, and throw stones in your neighbors? Because as, as men and women, we must have feeling. Didn't Shakespeare say very aptly in, in Om Hamlet, twelve summer nights pinch me? Do I not bleed? Stick a, a pin in me and, and there's no knowing what'll. And that, of course, is a very rough idea of inflation. And I, I'd like, if I may, to, to take you back to dear old, to, to show you the glamour of, of your hysterical past. Because when I look back on, on those days, it helps me to keep a stiff upper lip. And I think you should all keep a stiff upper lip, because I think a stiff upper lip played a splendid part in, in the making of this great, because lo look at the big men today, who at one time or another have been down on their as, as stiff uppers. Of course, I get on frightfully well with self-made men in America, where I've been spending the, the last, all the, the men are self-made, and all the women are on the make, sort of tit for tat and, and, and vice. And, and to get back to these big stiffs who have been out cold on their uppers, I, I should like you to cast your minds back to the perspiration uh, period. Everyone was gasping, uh, grasping there, because Cromwell and his band of iron head around backs from the wars of, of the roses, he came, laying the country waste, uh, tooting, lo looting, and, and pillaging as he went from pillage to pillage, collecting arms, legs, and then anything he could lay his hands on. Of course, I mean, things had come to a pretty pass. And of course, the prettier the thing, the, the bigger the, the what patriots they were in those days. They, they laid down their wa lives for their friends and then thought nothing of it. I mean, those and undoubtedly were the, the glorious days of the old Regent Street, a Regency, when pomp depended on your circumstances and then Nell Gwynn was the pride of old Drury, uh, Drury and she was sort of messing around with her oranges and apples and, and, and things. Of course, I, I'd like you to skip lightly over the next three or four hundred and picture yourself a night with King Arthur on, on a round table. Of course, I once spent a night on, on a billiard at, at Brighton, not quite the same thing, but, but equal. Of course, I don't want to let my personal experience interfere because this Arthur business was probably all on the, on the up and... I mean, after all, he butted his billiard table. He had to lie on it, and, and I can't help recalling at, at this time the, the words of Nelson at, at Charing uh, Victor Waterloo when he said, up, guards, and, and don't shoot till you see the whites of their atom. And do you know the one thing that confused me most in English history was whether Henry the Seventh had eight wives or whether Henry the Eighth had seven or whether Henry Hall was responsible for the whole thing. And as this is probably something I'll, I'll never find out, I think I'll rest on my moral, laurels and leave all the Henrys to rest on, on theirs.